So we are looking at the difference between a four-foot varus and a four-foot supinatus. We showed you how to assess that prone. You can also look at this from a standing posture. Okay? In these patients, it will look like their foot is collapsed. Okay? And you have to really watch this because you're going to see a foot that looks collapsed here, and you're going to think that that foot is overpronating or flexible, when in some cases it can be very rigid. So what we'll do here is I'll grab the navicular, Okay, and I'm going to try to get my subtalar joint in a neutral position. Okay, and I use that term loosely because subtalar neutral um, doesn't really exist. But we're going to try to get that foot into as quiet of a posture as we can, where the Achilles would be lined up with the calcaneus. In these cases, when I do that, the big toe is going to be off the ground. So the forefoot is in a different plane than the rear foot. Here's our paddle foot. Once I put the foot into this neutral position, or subtalar neutral, and I try to press the big toe to the floor, if it is rigid, so my rear foot's in one plane, my forefoot's in another, I try to press the big toe to the floor and it doesn't go anywhere, that is a forefoot varus. So a forefoot varus is a skeletal variant, okay? It's a structural variant in the forefoot that does, no matter how much you exercise that thing, it's not going anywhere. So a true forefoot varus, which luckily is a very, very small percent of the population, you will need to put some type of orthotic and or posting to bring the ground up to the big toe, okay? A forefoot varus causes pronation. So when I'm walking, go ahead and step forward for me, okay? She's gonna heel strike. She has to get the big toe to hit the ground. But because the forefoot is rigid, in order for her to do that, she has to pronate her foot. So you see why we're going to have to help this patient out by bringing the ground up to them, okay, for example, so that they don't have all this overpronation trying to get the big toe to hit the ground. Okay, so that's a forefoot varus, a structural variant that causes pronation. On the other side of this, a forefoot supinatus, which is much more common, okay? This is the one you're gonna see the most of. When you do your assessment, it's gonna look very similar. The subtalar joint's in neutral, the forefoot is in that paddle position. When I try to press the big toe to the ground this time, I'm able to do it, okay? A forefoot supinatus is a soft tissue restriction of the lateral column. So again, when she's in a neutral position in the rear foot, the forefoot is in this paddle position, it's because these soft tissues on the lateral column of the foot are restricted because a forefoot supinatus is caused by pronation. So someone who has poor intrinsic foot strength, someone who has um, an inability to control the rate at which the foot hits the ground, is going to be someone that lives in pronation. So someone who lives in pronation, they're going to have soft tissue. The soft tissue is going to get restricted here, and that will result in a forefoot supinatus. So a forefoot supinatus is a soft tissue restriction caused by pronation.